connection successful. You are now in control of the revenant drone. You may use it to reclaim your property. Hey guys, Dantix here. Doom Eternal is at our doorstep and it's more gloriously satisfying than its predecessor, Doom 2016. I recently had a chance to go hands-on with the final build of Doom and I'm happy to say I was extremely impressed. There's a lot I want to talk about, like more lore, increased utilization of platforming and puzzles, but the reason most people play Doom is for the fast-paced, intense first-person shooter action. The gameplay is what needs to be absolutely nailed in order for this title to succeed, and I'm happy to report that it does just that. In this video, I'm going to run through all the different ways you can personalize Doom Guy to slay your way and explain exactly why the combat is so damn rewarding, in turn, giving you a good idea of the game is for you. The Slayer has arrived. All mortal challenged personnel, please be advised. So recently, Bethesda sent us over to their offices and let us play a few hours of Doom Eternal right from the start of the game to get accustomed. And we really needed it. The footage you're seeing is from level 2 and level 3. We weren't allowed to record level 1 as the devs want you to experience it for yourself and, well, so do I. I'm happy to report there are no drawn out tutorials like there were in the E3 demo. They've listened to feedback and instead you learn new mechanics as you find them in an intuitive way. Like having to make a long jump in order to progress after unlocking the rocket boots. There is an overwhelming amount of complexity of the combat that appreciates the drip feed in order to keep the game flowing at a nice pace and to cement it in your muscle memory. Even a noob like me picked it up faster than Dean Takahashi from GameSpeed. So drip feeding us interesting new mechanics not only made it easier to learn, it gives you a sense of progression. Progression will be familiar to those who have played Doom 2016, but with some new additions. Similarly, you can unlock up to two different modifications for every gun you find. These mods can be utilized by holding your right mouse button or right trigger and include a sticky bomb and full auto mode for the combat shotgun, for example. The sticky bomb being my absolute favorite modification out of all the weapons I got to try, letting me take out groups of demons or precision remove parts of enemies, which I'll get into soon. While full auto absolutely ripped through demons and my ammo. Swapping between mods is done with a single button press. Alongside weapon mods are weapon upgrades and masteries. Every level has one of these bars here. Each node represents a weapon upgrade point, which you achieve for clearing out demonic corruption and taking part in interesting challenges which I'll go through in another video. You can spend weapon upgrade points on increasing the effectiveness of a weapon's mods. When you get all the upgrades for a mod, you reveal a challenge, like blowing up 20 revenant cannons with a sticky bomb, and when completed will unlock the mastery reward. In this case, being able to launch 5 sticky bombs before having to reload your combat shotgun. Around the levels you also find Praetor Suit Points, which you can use to upgrade your suit's effectiveness in many ways, like detecting secrets, surviving environmental effects, and reloading faster. You'll also find Sentinel Crystals, which ultimately serve to increase either your total health, armor, or ammo capacity. These upgrades unlock come in pairs though, and completing a pair unlocks a bonus, like increasing the duration of enemies burning from your shoulder-mounted flamethrower by increasing both your health and your armor together. Then there are runes which you can find hidden in the levels. These are used to unlock from a catalog of 9 effects, 3 of which can be equipped at any time. I chose the ability to slow down time while in air and holding the right mouse button. It was incredibly useful in combat. Finally, there are challenges which are going to change weekly. By completing these, you are rewarded with experience and each level grants you rewards. So your playstyle is more customizable than ever, but ultimately would mean nothing if the combat was awful. Thankfully, the combat is faster than ever and rewards those willing to learn its complexities. First, you need to keep moving. Doom is all about progression. This isn't a tactical first person action RPG. It's a shooter to its core and the developers have embraced that. If you stop moving, you will most likely die. The game doesn't pull any punches. You're very likely to fail a lot. I played on the equivalent of normal difficulty, which is the second lowest. Ultra Nightmare being the highest, wherein if you die, your whole run is dead and a marker drops to show you future you where you failed forever. I died a lot. Every time I did though, I knew it was my fault. I got complacent, I didn't use an ability right, or I used the wrong weapon for a job, or 
Like most of my deaths, I sucked during the puzzling elements and fell to my death. Also, as soon as I started recording, I started overthinking, and you can't think too much in Doom, you have to act quickly. The game does strike a good balance of making you feel badass and challenging you. More than ever though, the best players are going to be slaying demons with muscle memory. Since the action is fast paced, you can't be fumbling about with which button does what, so the drip feed of abilities and weapons helps develop those. That leaves you open to solving what Doom Eternal does best, hard, intricate combat puzzles. You're given all the tools you need and thrown into an area with demons that are ready to be slain, you just have to choose how. You're given basic movement tools like double jumps and dashes to move around the arena in a way that keeps you alive or dispatches demons as quickly as possible. In Doom Eternal, the best defense is a good offense as you get health and armor for killing, not for hiding and recovering. In fact, if you find yourself low on health, you want to run towards the scary things with teeth. Let me explain why. Most enemies drop a small amount of health when they die, however, when they are low on health, they will flash. Then you can hit a button and perform a glory kill, which is exactly how it sounds. Gloriously gory. Gory? Gloriously gory. That's a bit of a tongue twister. This will drop a large amount of health, depending on the demon. Bam, you're healthy again. Also, early on you'll unlock a shoulder mounted flamethrower, with a press of a button you'll spray enemies with purifying fire, and damaging those enemies while they burn will drop armor, so bam, you're even healthier. Oh, but you ran out of ammo. Since it happens a lot, you'll be unloading into endless waves of hell, so the developers have you covered with your trusty chainsaw. Pressing a button strikes the nearest target with an instant kill chainsaw attack, netting an explosion of ammo. So those are three single button presses to refill your main resources, which you need to balance wisely during combat in order to survive and thrive. The flamethrower has a short cooldown so you, you can't spam it. The glory kills can be spammed, but you need to get those demons low to do it. The chainsaw requires fuel. The bigger the enemy, the larger amount of fuel it takes to kill. If you run dry, a single unit of fuel will slowly recharge over time, so you'll always be able to kill the smaller fodder enemies like zombies and imps for ammo. Zombies are basically pinatas waiting to be popped for juicy resources, so in the heart of battle, it's best to save these enemies for when you need a top up. I found myself simply ignoring them until I needed health or ammo. Your heavy demons are the ones you need to focus your attention on. The Arachnotron, for example, has heavy weapons on its back that you can destroy to remove its ability to snipe you from range, which gives you time to get through its massive health pool. You can do this with the aforementioned Sticky Bomb mod, or snipe it with the mod to your heavy cannon. The Kaka Demon is interesting in that if you shoot a bomb into its mouth, it'll eat it, it'll explode, and then the demon will be dazed, letting you glory kill it and bypass its large health pool. All of the heavy demons have an easier way to be slain. Some weapons are just simply better for the job than others, and you're encouraged to keep switching to the right tool. For example, shielded soldiers can be difficult to take on, but the plasma rifle's projectiles overload the shield and make it explode, taking out every demon around them. You also have access to a shoulder-mounted grenade launcher, which is great for those caca demons or clearing out a lot of fodder. You can also unlock other items that can replace this slot, like frost grenades or the ability to drop a decoy. There's a lot going on that you can utilize. Even the environment has explosives or traps around that you can utilize to lay waste to even the heaviest of demons. There are areas to swing through the air, teleport to the other side of the arena, or shoot up into the sky. All the while, if you happen to die, you're loaded back to the checkpoint extremely quickly. Also, you find lives around the map. If you die while you have a life, you're just instantly respawned where you dropped and can continue to fight. So to reiterate, you'll be running, jumping and dashing around amazingly designed levels which, which serve to enhance the combat puzzle while dispatching demons with your plethora of weapons like the shotgun, rocket launcher, microwave, modded plasma rifle and more. You'll be burning enemies to top up your armor and beating demons with their own limbs to get back health. When you run out of ammo, you'll be slicing demons in half to keep the party going. It all equates to fast-paced, non-stop action that feels both rewarding and challenging. The UI is easy to read, the demons are easy to distinguish between, and the power-ups laid around the map like health, armor, ammo, and quad damage, and so on, are easy to see and exploit. In other words, 
The game's mechanics aren't holding you back from your potential. If you die, it's all on you, buddy. And that's what makes Doom's combat so damn great. Another factor is simply the tactile response you get from slaying. The guns feel weighty and powerful. The combat shotgun is made from titanium, for example, and it feels like it does as you move and fire it. As you shoot enemies, parts of their flesh will blow off contextually. One time I had been shooting a Hell Knight's legs and it continued to chase me with both its shins down to the bone. When you're spending the majority of your time killing demons, you want the killing to be satisfying, and it very much is especially the gruesome and crazy glory kills. So sound goes hand in hand with the visual and yet again, it's nailed. The guns sound glorious and combined with the visual really sell you on the power behind each one. You'll also be slaying demons to an amazing heart pumping soundtrack. This is not a game you play if you wanna chill out. You'll, you'll be on the edge of your seat the whole time. So hopefully this gave you a good idea of what to expect gameplay wise in Doom Eternal. There's tons more I enjoyed in the game, like exploration progression being organic, leading you to where you need to go subtly with color cues, but I'll save little things like that for another video. Thanks so much for watching, and if you liked the video, please do the standard YouTube stuff, it helps me out a lot. So until next time guys, bye bye